This is another Jazz Chord Shapes guitar lesson, and I'm going to teach you a very useful guitar seventh chords exercise to master root position seventh chords all over the fretboard in various keys. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is episode 10 of a series about mastering chords all over the guitar. And we are talking about seventh chords over the last few videos. And the last video I did a really intense exercise for practicing through the qualities of seventh chords called the chord quality cycle exercise. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about playing through the chord qualities that exist within a key, actually grouping them together uh, within a key. So it um, sounds quite nice. These are, these are the chords that sound good together and that uh, end up constructing actual chord progressions that exist in songs. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you a little arrangement using these exact chord shapes to show you how they exist in songs uh, using a very classic jazz standard and it's a very cool sounding kind of solo guitar sounding uh, arrangement using just these shapes and so stick around for that but first we got to get through the exercise and it's gonna be a big one but the most important thing is I want you to understand how the exercise works and why it might be useful for you so you're kind of learning about the exercise and then you can dive in and keep it in your back pocket and use it anytime you want to freshen up on what chord qualities exist through a major key and in all kinds of areas and various positions all over the guitar. So you'll see how it works. Definitely watch the other videos in this series if you're confused about anything because tons of awesome stuff is covered. For example, in episode four of this series, we learned how to play and construct triads through a major scale off of the fifth string, starting with B flat, learning that the one chord is major, two chord is minor, three chord is minor, four chord is major, five chord is major, six chord is minor, seven chord is diminished, and back to one. This lesson expands on that. We're basically going to do that same thing, but we're going to add sevens to all those chords. So they'll all be seventh chords. And then we're going to do them along the sixth string and the fourth string as well. And then we are going to do them through every other key because we also want to be able to see these not just along strings, but crossing strings as well. And that's when it becomes actually very useful for seeing what chord number is in a key uh, for actual song playing and chord progressions because we don't want to just hop around the fretboard this way all the time. It's doable, but we want to cross strings this way as well. I did do a video a while ago about the seventh chords in B flat along the fifth string with passing diminished seventh chords. And that's what that video is all about. And I'll put a link in the description of that. Also worth checking out. This is not using those passing diminished seventh chords. So I just wanted to throw that in the mix and let you know about that because it's also a really cool sound. All right, for this exercise, we are going to start in the key of F. That's just because it's the lowest string on the lowest fret. We're not going to use the open E string for this. We're going to start in F, and then we're going to do um, all the seventh chords through the key and then go through the circle of fourths. And you'll see what I mean, because I'm going to demonstrate through the whole thing. From the last lesson, these shapes should be familiar, but now we're doing them through the key. So the one chord is major seven. The two chord is minor seven. The three chord is minor seven. The four chord is major seven. Let's notice they sound quite nice together. Five chords dominant seven. Six chords minor seven, seventh chord of the key is half diminished, and back to major seven, major seven, half diminished, minor seven, dominant seven, major seven, minor seven, minor seven. So that's uh, through the key there. So be able to do that off of F on the sixth string. All right, next we're going to do it off of B flat. So this is just like that uh, episode four, but adding sevens. And if we add those, we get these shapes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six. All right, that's what we need to do there, going along the string. And the last uh, key that we're gonna just go along a single string is E flat. So that's first fret, fourth string. So we have major seven shape, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that covers all the shapes we need and it covers the diatonic structure of how seventh chords exist. Um, and even if we know this stuff theoretically, we, we have to play it on the guitar and we have to play it a bunch on the guitar in all these different places to really uh, not just know it well, but know it well with our fingers, with our ears, with the fretboard, with the instrument. So those three keys were for the sake of going along one string. The rest of the keys, we're gonna cross strings because we need to be able to see it this way as well. Uh, a fourth up from E flat is A flat. One, two, three, four, that's A flat. We're going through the circle of fourths every time. So we're just going, what's the key that's up a fourth? We're doing that next. So uh, 
A flat we're gonna play here off the sixth string. When we play a, our chords through the keys off the sixth string, I want you to follow this path. You're gonna play the chords that are based off of these roots. Okay, so you'll play the one chord off this note, the two chord off this note, the three chord. So it's just this scale shape, but you're playing the chords off of them instead. So it's like we're playing a scale with chords and crossing strings, very cool. So we have the one chord major seven, the two chord minor seven, three chord minor seven, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Sounds a little interesting if you're thinking of it melodically. And then if you're hearing the top note, it doesn't, you know, continue as a scale on, uh, as like a melodic uh, movement on the top note, but that's okay. We're just kind of working with these chord shapes. So every time from now on, when we start on the sixth string, we're gonna follow that exact path. We're gonna call that path one. That's following the chords along this scale form. Next key, that is a fourth up from A flat. One, two, three, four is D flat. Okay, we need a new path because we're starting on the fifth string. So here's our path. We're gonna follow the chords off of these roots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay, you're gonna make chords off of this path. Now, I want you to also play the chords that are below. And actually, I want you to go one, seven, six, five, one, because I learned over time that when we just, uh, when I just have someone do from the lowest tonic up and back down, uh, we don't necessarily learn to see and understand the options that are below. So we need to go below and back up as well. So this is our path for anytime we're playing off the fifth string now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five. And when you land on five, you can just jump back to one. You can also uh, five, six, seven, one, but that's not necessary. Just get to five and then kind of land back on one to resolve that. Now, every time from now on, when we start on a fifth string, our, our tonic chord, our root off the fifth string, we are going to use that path. To play all the chords along. We don't start on the fourth string anywhere else than, than that E flat key that we played along the fourth string. So uh, we have everything we need now to go through the rest of the keys. After E flat is one, two, three, four. And I usually do, I like to do this if you need, if you wanna see it on the fretboard, one, two, three, four, and then go down an octave. Okay, so this is G flat or F sharp, and we're gonna play the chords through that. We're gonna follow our path one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. I'm just going to demonstrate through the rest of the exercise. We've already done half of the keys, so we're halfway there. It's great. Uh, up a fourth, bum, 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 bum. We're at B now. We're going to follow path two because we're starting on string five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, one. Awesome. Uh, a fourth up dun, 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 is E. I don't want us to do this low E, so I'm gonna have us jump to just the fifth string E and do path two again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, one. If your guitar gives you trouble because you can't reach that high based on the structure of your guitar, just go as high as you can and come back down. That's why we're doing all the keys, no problem. Uh, next uh, key, one, two, three, four, is A. I went up a fourth and then down an octave to get off the sixth string. Path one, here we go. We're following that structure with chords off of each one. One chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, etc. D is the next key, one, two, three, four, that's D. We only have two keys left. This is going great. nice and slow uh, one two three four then down an octave I'm at G now last uh, uh, two more keys now because we started on F so here we go with path one okay that 
was G. Bum, 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 bum. Now path two with C. This is the last one. That's all the seventh chords that exist diatonically in a major key in every key on the guitar. And we did along uh, the sixth string, fifth string, and fourth string to make sure we can see it linearly along one string. It's actually easier to see that way, but then very important that we learned how to do the same thing crossing strings. This is amazing practice. This is the repetition we need when practicing, but also making us do it in different places in tonality and all over the guitar. So a lot of progressions, especially classic tunes, jazz tunes, and standards will use these types of these chord quality types. Uh, however, it's it's almost every tune will go out of the key. It won't use just exclusively uh, chords within a key like we have practiced so far. However, we do have to know that to even be able to see and understand when a progression uh, shifts and has a collection of chords that is from another key. So if we can see this well, and we just did it through all the keys, so that's pretty awesome. So if a progression shifts and, and we see, oh, it looks like now we have a two, a five, and a one, which is a, such a common chord progression, especially in jazz, we see, oh, cool, now we shifted to this other key because we're seeing the connections here. So the tune, All the Things You Are, very famous jazz standard. Um, it's a great one to do here because the melody is almost exclusively just the third of every chord throughout a chord progression that uses these shapes. And it has a cool key change in it too, so you'll see an example of what I'm talking about with those key changes. So we're gonna do F minor seven, specifically off the fifth string here. So F minor seven off the fifth string, and we're gonna call this six, okay? So this is six. And then we're going to go up to B flat minor seven off the fourth string. We're going to call this two. Okay, so we're going six to two. Now, if we're not, we haven't jumped in that kind of way with our exercise, but you can map around with your uh, connections that you've learned to find that, right? So if this is six, okay, well, seven is here and one is here. Or if this is six, okay, seven is here and one is here. Oh, yeah, two is here. Okay, six two, six, two. So the scale itself is the structure we can use to, to find anything else that we want. It's just like when we're using the single note scales and kind of counting around to find things, you can kind of see these chord structures. So, okay, if six is here, two is here. Okay, six is here, so five is here. So this is six, two, five, one. That's, uh, this is the, notice it's actually going through the circle of fourths. Uh, up a fourth, up a fourth, but then down an octave in this case, uh, up a fourth. And so this is that's why I go through the circle of fourths also in the exercises is because that is the most common um, actual harmonic motion that's happening in functional harmony in actual music. So we have six, two, five, one, four. Circle of fourths in the key. That's all in the key, okay? And again, you can uh, find for yourself one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's why that exercise that we just went through is so powerful. You can really find that. One, two, oh, A flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Oh, there's two. Okay, they're all in there, but we're just going through in a certain order. So if you play those and you bring that melody note out on the top, just the third of each chord that's on the top of these voicings, uh, you almost have the exact melody of the tune. And I didn't give you the next part yet. So what's very cool here is now we go up a half step to D minor seven, and that is two. And then we're gonna play five, two, five. One. That's the first phrase of this tune, all the things you are. Um, and you don't have to bring the melody out rhythmically in the way that I was. Just try to get the note to ring out nicely and it will almost be a chord melody arrangement of this song. That's just the chords. That's how I want you to practice it for now. If I do try to bring the melody out, uh, to make it sound a little more like the melody of the tune, it would I would kind of break the chords up a little bit and emphasize the melody on its own a couple times. If 
if you look up other tunes to play that use seventh chords uh, or jazz tune or standard, you might see chord types that are unfamiliar that have things sharp five, flat five, sharp 11, um, extra information and without knowing how to interpret those. So I have a system for how to interpret any of those chords, any crazy chord, any complex chord for how to interpret those with only eight chord shapes. Um, and it's a very cool method because it just takes the essence of a chord, gives you an accurate uh, shape, two shapes actually, that you can play for any uh, chord type that exists. And these are very uh, legit chord voicings that people use, professionals use all the time because they give you kind of a uh, just minimal necessary sound, uh, not too busy. And you can always learn about building uh, more complex chords on top of these essential structures. So I have a free little booklet that you can get to learn that method. And it's super fun because you can just look up literally any jazz chord progression, grab the real book or um, any sort of lead sheet um, and be able to interpret those totally accurately. So awesome if you want to accompany someone or if you like to sing and you want to sing an old jazz tune and and just have something to play for all those. They're pretty easy, movable shapes as well. So uh, you can get that booklet that I made at anyjazzchord.com or use the link in the description. I'm here with a new lesson video every Tuesday, so make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification bell so you get a notification. When I put out a new video, we're gonna get even more advanced with chords coming up soon. We are going to be talking about the theory and techniques of these complex extensions and alterations of chords in the near future. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in those lessons. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much.